If you watched my previous video, you would know that I love the design of this new M1 iMac, and I'd mostly recommend it for families who need a capable home desktop computer, and one that'll probably perform for years to come. If you've decided this is the computer for you, there are still a few choices you have to make before you get one of these in your home. And it really comes down to these three key points. Price, performance, and looks. Here's the catch though, you can only pick two. If you are in the market for a new desktop Mac with an M1 chip installed, there are three options for you right now. Number one, the base version of the 24 inch iMac. Number two is the more expensive 24 inch iMac, one of which I have right here. And number three is the Mac mini, which I got to try out earlier this year. Now you will see three options on the buy screen for the iMacs, but the only difference between the two on the right is the internal storage. Everything else is exactly the same, so I'm counting them as one product. So besides the obvious color choices, the difference between the base model and these two might not be entirely apparent from the website, but there are a few fundamental things that make this cheaper iMac a bit different. One, it only has two ports in the back compared to the four found on the other models. Two, it doesn't come with an Ethernet port in the power brick, unless you pay extra. Three, the keyboard doesn't come with the fingerprint sensor, unless you pay extra. Four, it has seven instead of eight cores in the GPU, that one is clear on the website. Five, and this one's a little bit less clear, the base model actually only has one fan in it compared to the other models too. And this means the base model overall will have a harder time cooling itself down when it's in use. The main question I'd ask before buying either of the iMacs is are the sacrifices the base model making actually gonna impact how I use it? You might not need more than two USB ports at once. You might just plug a USB hub in the back and never touch the ports again. Do you use Ethernet to connect to the internet or is everything done on Wi-Fi? Do you really care about having a fingerprint sensor? The extra core in the GPU likely won't even matter unless you're doing intense gaming or 3D work. And like I've said before, there are better options out there for those kinds of activities. It is a little strange that it's not disclosed that the base model has only one fan compared to the two on this model. But again, that is unlikely to come into play unless you're really pushing the machine. If you're just using it for basic tasks, then the extra fan probably won't matter that much. That actually leaves us with this nice little chart. The base has got looks and price. If you need the extra ports or think you're using the iMac for heavy processors a lot, the more expensive model has you covered. Here's your third option though, you could skip both iMacs and build your own version using the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini should net you similar performance to the higher end iMac, so it's really down to the ports and price here. It has a similar number of ports as the higher end iMac, opting for original USB-A ports over USB-C. USB-C is slowly becoming the norm, but if you're wanting to make use of some of your existing tech, those USB-A plugs may be preferable to you. It also has HDMI out, and you can plug in a second screen through the Thunderbolt port. The main question I'd ask when considering the Mini is, can you find a screen, webcam, mouse, and keyboard for the price difference between it and the IMAX? The answer is of course, yes, you can, but it might take you a little bit longer to find a screen and speaker setup that matches the quality of the IMAX. It's really good. When you look at price, the IMAX may look like they're at a premium, but there is something to be said about having the entire setup ready to go in one box. When I first got this, I legitimately pulled it out of the box, plugged it in, turned it on, and it was ready to go. I, I think that's worth a little bit extra, you know. It also means it's, uh, I know it's a desktop, but it also means that you can kind of move it around a lot more. It actually makes this a really portable desktop computer somehow. <laughs> Sure, that probably won't be that useful to most people, but I actually really like that you can pick this up and move it around and um, it's all just contained in the one computer. So that's pretty much all the differences. Which one should you choose? If you're not a pro user or hardcore gamer, Apple's M1 offering does have a little bit of something for everybody. The M1 Mac is the thrifty choice and gives you the most options to really make the Mac experience yours without sacrificing power. It just can't go past the iMac's gorgeous screen, design and colors though. The more expensive iMac's do come in more colors, have a few more bells and whistles, and can potentially perform higher end tasks for longer. But of course, all of that comes at a premium price. So that leaves the cheaper base model, which for most people who actually want an iMac will be more than powerful enough. The best parts about the new iMacs are all still included in the base model. So you've got the screen, the speakers, and the beautiful design, and you're all still getting that. It's just a lot cheaper. 
So if you don't expect to be pushing your iMac performance wise again and again, the base model is probably going to have you covered. For the sort of stuff that I've really been enjoying while using this iMac, which is word processing, uh, doing video calls and watching a lot of movies, my personal choice would actually be the base model. And hey, maybe from these videos, you've realized you don't actually want an M1 desktop and you'd much rather a laptop and you can just plug in a display whenever you need to have that desktop experience. If that sounds like you, I would suggest going and watching the M1 laptop reviews and comparison on this very channel.